Hello everyone. Let's uh, discuss about thermal stresses and strains. So to understand the thermal stresses and strain well, we consider a combined mechanical and thermal loading for a three-dimensional stress system. Strain due to thermal loading is independent of cross-sectional properties and will be same in all the directions. It depends only on thermal coefficient of expansion and thermal loading. So thermal strain in x direction is equal to thermal strain in y direction is equal to thermal strain in z direction equal to alpha delta t. Now mechanical strain due to applied mechanical loading. We consider a triaxial stress system as given by as given by here we have a normal stress in x direction sigma x we have a normal strain in y direction sigma y and we have a normal stress in z direction sigma z my normal strain can be written in terms of my normal stresses by stress strain relationship so my mechanical strain in x direction is equal to epsilon x is equal to sigma x by e minus nu by e sigma y plus sigma z similarly we can write epsilon y and epsilon z total strain due to combined loading will be summation of thermal strain and mechanical strain so my total strain epsilon is equal to epsilon m plus epsilon t now my total strain in x direction is equal to mechanical strain in x direction plus thermal strain in x direction so my total strain in epsilon in x direction epsilon x is sigma x by e minus nu by e sigma y plus sigma z plus thermal strain in x direction similarly we can write total strain in y and z direction now my equation 1 equation 2 and equation 3 are my total strain in x direction y direction and z direction due to thermal loading and my triaxial stress system now to understand further thermal stresses we consider few cases so my case one says we have only thermal loading and there is no constraint in there is no constraint mean all the uh, mean my body is free to expand in all the direction so for this case my stress in all three direction will be zero but my strain in all three direction will be only due to thermal loading and it will be equal to alpha delta t now case 2 in case 2 we we are considering only thermal loading and constraint in x direction so it is also the case of bar problem now for case 2 my sigma x is not equal to 0 if it is constant in x direction and my sigma y and sigma z is equal to 0. When we do not have, uh, when we have non-zero stress in x direction, so my total strain in x direction will be 0. But my total strain in y and z direction will be non-zero so how we can find this non-zero stress we can substitute in equation one f total strain in x direction is zero so when f this is equal to zero then we can see 0 equal to sigma x by e minus nu by e 0 plus 0 plus alpha delta t so from here we find 
thermal stress in x direction is equal to minus e alpha delta t okay now we substitute this sigma x thermal in equation 2 and 3 so we will find unknown epsilon y and epsilon z so from equation 2 and 3 my epsilon y equal to epsilon z is equal to 1 plus nu times alpha delta t so what we did it is equal to minus nu by e sigma x and we know sigma x is what e alpha delta t it is minus e alpha delta t so minus minus plus e will get cancelled so we'll get alpha delta t plus nu alpha delta t so my strain in y direct y and z direction equal to 1 plus nu alpha delta t now case 3 only thermal loading and constraint in x and y direction when it is constraint in x and y direction my sigma x and sigma y will be non zero and my sigma z will be zero now in this case epsilon x and epsilon y will be zero but epsilon z will be non zero so we can use equation one and two from equation one and two we can find sigma x and sigma y so my sigma x and sigma y is coming as minus e alpha delta t upon one minus nu once we know sigma x and sigma y we can substitute this in equation three and we can find epsilon z so for this case my epsilon z will come as one plus nu by one minus nu into alpha delta t now case for only thermal loading and constraint in all three direction for this case my all three normal stresses will be non-zero but my strain in all three direction will be zero now how we can find these three non-zero stresses we can substitute we can use equation one where we substitute sigma x equal to sigma y equal to sigma z and epsilon x is equal to zero so from here we find sigma x equal to sigma y equal to sigma z is equal to minus e alpha delta t upon one minus two nu and my strain in all three directions are zero okay so now we can take a few problem based on these concepts so let's take problem number one this a steel cube with all faces free to deform has young's modulus e cohesion's ratio nu and coefficient of thermal expansion alpha the pressure developed within the cube when it is subjected to a uniform increase in temperature delta t is given by here in this case all faces are free to deform so my strain in all direction will be non-zero but my stresses in all my stresses in all the direction will be zero okay so my answer is a okay let's move to next problem what it says a solid steel cube constraint in all six faces is heated so that temperature rises uniformly by delta t if the thermal coefficient of the material is alpha young's modulus is e and poison's ratio is nu the thermal stresses developed in the cube due to heating is now in this case all six faces are constrained so when all six faces are constrained th 
thermal stresses developed in the cube will be equal to minus alpha delta t e by 1 minus t 2 nu. It is the case 4. Here we can see for case 4 when there is constant in x, y and z direction. So thermal stresses developed are minus e alpha delta t upon 1 minus 2 nu. Okay. Now let's see problem number third. A steel bar of rectangular cross section is heated uniformly and the rise in temperature is delta t. The Young's modulus is E. The Poisson's ratio is nu and the coefficient of thermal expansion is alpha. The bar is completely restrained in the axial direction and lateral direction. So in this case, my all three direction X, Y and Z are constrained. So my thermal stress developed in the bar will be same in all three direction means it will be same in axial as well as lateral direction. So my stress is again minus E alpha delta T minus E alpha delta T upon 1 minus 2 nu. So my answer is C. Now look part B. In part B it says assume the that the bar is allowed to deform freely in lateral directions while keeping the axial direction restrained. The percentage change in the magnitude of axial thermal stress. So in first case my all the directions are constrained. Now in case B only axial direction is constrained but lateral directions are free to deform. So in this case my thermal stress epsilon x t 2 will be equal to minus e alpha delta t. So it is the case of bar. Now my sigma x t1 is minus e alpha delta t upon 1 minus 2 nu. So when nu is 0.2 so for that my sigma my sigma x t1 is equal to minus 2 e alpha delta t. Now once we know sigma x t2 sigma x t1 my percentage change will be equal to sigma x t2 minus sigma x t1 divided by sigma x t1 into 100. So my percentage change you can see here sigma x t2 minus sigma x t1 upon sigma x t1 into 100. Sigma x t1 is minus 2 e alpha delta t. So substitute here and multiply <coughs> when we simplify we will get 50 percent change in thermal stress. So our answer is C. Our answer is C. Okay, clear? Okay, so guys, this is one of the important topic in gate aerospace and gate mechanical engineering. We will be discussing many more similar topics. Thank you.